All right, nobody panic. It's happening. It's Age of Empires 4. Hey there, my name is Promise. I have been looking forward to this game for years, from long before it was ever announced, hoping we were going to get another installment in this incredible franchise that would be worthy of its predecessors, especially Age of Empires 2, which I still contend is one of the best real-time strategy games ever made, if not the best. Well now, here we are. Age of Empires 4 is finally upon us. It will be released as of October 28th, though Xbox was kind enough to give me early access so I can take a look and show it off for you guys today. The real question is, will Age of Empires 4 be a modern, worthy successor to its forebears? And amazingly, I think the answer might just be yes. This is the game we've been waiting for. Let's take a look at the single player mode. Now to start off, we have four campaigns in the game. The Normans, the Hundred Years' War, the Mongol Empire, and the Rise of Moscow. All four sound very fun and very involved, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. We also have Skirmish Mode, where you can, of course, pit yourself against the AI with several different preset game modes. And finally, The Art of War, which made its introduction in some of the remastered versions of the previous Age of Empires games. And these are kind of like advanced tutorials and challenge modes that teach you some advanced tactics and strategies and then encourage you to really hone your timing to get this done as fast as possible. Actually, very good tool if you're looking to be competitive in multiplayer. Really challenges you in all the right ways. But I want to start with the campaigns, because this is something that genuinely excites me. So for reference, when I was a kid, I loved the Age of Empires 2 campaigns. It was really fun following those historical characters, learning their stories, and enjoying really well-crafted levels. So my expectations for a campaign mode in Age of Empires are very high. But this game actually delivers by following that formula very carefully, and then building upon it, and telling more story and more immersifying way. I've been really having a lot of fun so far. One thing to note, this game does not follow a single character in each campaign, but rather starts with a major flashpoint in human history and then follows the generations and ripple effects that would then follow. So for example, with the Normans, you'll start off as William the Conqueror with the Battle of Hastings and the subjugation of Anglo-Saxon England. But then you'll get to experience the succession crisis between King Henry I and the Duke of Normandy, ultimately bringing Normandy back into the fold with the Crown of England and challenging France directly. Then you get to play with the civil war between Matilda and Stephen even the claimant to the throne. All of this culminating in the Battle of Lincoln in 1217, almost 150 years of history being covered instead of one single military campaign. A very different way to approach it, but really fun. And part of that is because of the way that the developers are portraying this information. At the beginning of each of these missions, they'll show some cinematics mostly comprised of live action shots of the real locations as they are in the modern world today, explaining some of the history leading up to the event, why it was so important, and you'll even get a little information as to the terrain and the tactics and why the battle would be particularly interesting. It's so well done that I actually had to call my teacher wife over and say, look at this and tell me this wouldn't be really cool for kids to watch. It feels like I'm watching a BBC documentary, and I actually was learning something before every different event, which is so cool because I am not uneducated when it comes to medieval affairs, but this is actually so well presented, I'm learning stuff. That's just exciting to me. So here's an example from the Norman campaign, and we are in Lincolnshire in 1141. Now, I don't want to spoil the entire level here, but some spoilers are kind of inevitable. To set the stage, the Empress Matilda is trying to take the throne of England, as was promised to her upon the death of her father. But her lower nobles revolted against her because they did not want a woman to rule the country, so instead King Stephen has claimed the throne. Her forces right now are sieged in Lincolnshire, and she is waiting for her half-brother, Robert of Gloucester, to break through the siege and offer relief to the city. So that's who we are playing with in this campaign. And most of these missions are going to have some sort of unique objective. Sometimes it does require you actually build up a town and an economy and build up your own forces, or in this case, we're going to start off with an army. And in this case, we want to employ ambush tactics to cut off the reinforcements to the siege so we can leave King Stephen isolated. Then we join join up with some Welsh allies who will help us break through to the city, offering relief and new supply lines. Then we need to actually break the English siege, conquer their forces, and capture King Stephen so we can bring about a swift resolution to this war. It's a really fun level, and I like the way this information is presented. You get to reenact the tactics and the strategies that were used by these key characters in history in order to turn the tide. 
very fun, and every mission ends up being something like this. It's just the objectives will change depending on which role you are trying to fill. All right, let's go ahead and try out a skirmish, because I know this is something you guys want to see. You want gameplay? Well, I'm happy to oblige. Let's go ahead and play with, let's say, the Holy Roman Empire against the Mongols. On an intermediate difficulty for now, that should be perfectly fine. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you have played Age of Empires 2, this is going to look and feel very familiar to you, except just better and more modern. We have a town center, and we have workers. We want to gather up food, wood, gold, and stone. And I do have a scout who is going to gather up some sheep real quick, though you may have noticed they come running and following my scout automatically because he has an ability now to automatically send the sheep back home. That's pretty darn handy. No more micromanaging and losing of sheep. <laughs> this is the little things in life that just make things so much better. Anyway, first thing I'm going to do is train up several more workers because we want to get plenty of food. You can see in the bottom left that I do have seven workers currently assigned to gathering food. In the meantime, let's go scout a little bit up to the north. As soon as this person is trained up, we're going to go ahead and place down a new house because I do not want to be getting housing capped like a scrub. And let's go back to some more scouting. Hey, look, relics. Drop those off in a monastery at the medieval era. We can get a steady stream of gold. That's pretty nice. Uh, if I'm moving a little bit fast right now, I do apologize. But given that this is a real-time strategy game, I don't really have the brain power to make engaging commentary and also uh, play this game quickly at the same time. So right now what I'm doing is making my commentary after I've already recorded this match. It's about 30 minutes. Uh, don't worry, I will cut it down using jump cuts to make it a little bit more engaging, but I'm going to show off all the high points. Here's some more sheep, by the way, and sure enough, they come a-running. Gosh, that's just... That's so stinking convenient, I'm not going to lie. Uh, each of these different buildings actually do have different hotkeys. That's going to be very important for you if you are uh, used to multiplayer in Age of Empires 2. If you want to place down an arrow 1 building, you have to first set uh, the Q key in order to select a subset of arrow 1 buildings. If you want to place down arrow 2 buildings, you would hit the W key, etc. Then you would hit the hot key for the specific building that you're looking for. It sounds kind of complicated, and it does slow you down a little bit because you need two hot keys in order to access a building instead of one. But it's also very intuitive. I mean, I've had no problem so far. It's kind of like riding a bike. I picked this up, and I immediately started playing feeling like I was doing pretty well. Jumping forward a bit, we are ready to move on to the second age. Now here's a major departure from the other games. We do not advance ages at the town center. Instead, we have to build a landmark, which is kind of like a mini wonder. And when we do want to move ages, you can see that they will do different things, so we can choose some sort of perks. Uh, the more villagers we assign, the faster we will construct the building and advance ages. Once this landmark is built, we have to defend it, because a way of winning these skirmishes is to destroy all of an opponent's landmarks, including their town center. The more landmarks they have, the harder it's going to be to win the game. So build it, and then defend it. It does cost gold in order to build these, I should note, so that's one of the reasons I'm already gathering gold. It's a bit of a departure from the build orders of Age of Empires 2. Okay, looks like my opponent has reached the feudal age before I did. Well, that's a little unfortunate, but we're not that far behind, and I'm not feeling too worried about it. Five people currently working on our special landmark, our little mini wonder, and then we'll get to move on to the next era. Of course, with new eras come new technologies, so you can uh, improve your resource gathering efficiency, not to mention different military structures, etc. At the beginning of the game, you only have access to infantry, but now we have access to uh, cavalry as well as ranged units. So we'll want to make use of that in just a moment. For now, let's make sure we stay on top of things like our food, place down perhaps a second milk, because I guarantee I'm going to fill that up in a bit. And let's go ahead and start researching some additional technology. Ah, need more gold. All right, that's fine. Aha, we have found the Mongols. All right, so we know where they are and what they're up to. That's their town center. Uh, looks like they were trying to build an outpost. I'm not sure why they really gave up over there, but that's okay. So we know where their town center is. That is a level one uh, landmark we'll need to destroy. We also know where their second landmark is located. Destroy both of them, and we win the game. So this gives me an idea where I need to go. Go ahead and start placing down some barracks. I usually like to have at least two or three of every military structure if I can, just because it does allow me to retrain up an army very quickly and keep standing in more reinforcements when the eventual onslaught does begin. So we'll go ahead and construct two of these for now, I think, and then maybe we'll go ahead and forward place some other military structures a bit closer to them, cutting down on reinforcement time drastically. Gonna need a fair bit more resources before we can move on to the Castle Age, so let's go ahead and get some more 
upgrades for our miners and uh, maybe start getting some spearmen to defend ourselves. Yeah, let's go ahead and train up some spearmen. These are Mongols. They're gonna have cavalry, we all know it. <laughs> let's, let's be ready for that. One thing I will say, I love the artwork of this game. Notice as I'm placing down some houses and other structures, you're seeing like little fields and bushes and stuff place themselves. It just makes the whole town feel a bit more organic rather than kind of, I don't know, blocky and alien. They did a really good job in the artwork of this game and making it feel like it's alive to some extent. And the music and sound effects are fantastic as well. I mean, really nothing to complain about here. I think we're about ready to move on to the castle age. Now the question is, are we gonna want a structure that lets us uh, train five units at a time, like a super barracks, or like a special monastery that gets me even more gold from relics? Well, I have a couple relics nearby. Sure, this seems like something we could use. So over here on the eastern side of the map, I am building up a couple of stables. The idea being that we will be able to have military units training up close to the front line and cutting down on travel time. It's a pretty common tactic from Age of Empires 2. A little bit risky because if they catch you out there, then you can lose some important military infrastructure kind of early on. But if it works, well, it's just going to make my life a bit easier. Oh, say goodbye to all the gold. All right, let's go ahead and set up something new over here. Era 3 should be finishing just about now. Excellent. So I've already sent my prelates over here to be able to pick up a quick relic and drop it off. Functioning like a monastery so we can get some early extra gold generation. That'll always be nice. Let's make sure we get some upgrades going for our units. I want them to be their latest value as well as some better weapons, more food harvesting, and so on. All of this is going to be very important for us. I think we might have almost a large enough army that we can go for an early skirmish if we can catch them uh, when they're unsuspecting that maybe we can actually do some serious economic damage. At least that's what I'm hoping for. We'll see. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, no, I saw something on the map. Looks like they're sending some cavalry. They may be going for an attack against me. Okay, so their timing's about the same as mine. Well, I have spearmen, and spearmen, of course, are a natural counter to the cavalry, so we should send them to go intercept unless... I don't see them anymore. Are they up here by the sacred site? Oh, wait. Nope. Oh, crud. Okay. Run, everyone, run. Get back. They caught me with my pants down. Oh, this isn't going to be good. All right. Training up some more spearmen will help. My gold production is going to suffer a lot in just a moment. Um, <laughs> everyone, get back home. Well, this is proving to be just a little bit painful. I lost quite a few workers out of that arrangement. I think like six. That normally would be very, very bad, but I'm hoping that we can then go for some sort of a counter strike. Let's see, I've built a couple of archery ranges over to the east as well, so we can start training up some longbowmen, which will be nice. Also, maybe a couple of extra barracks down in that direction, so we can keep training up more units a little bit close by. And probably a new prelate to make up for the one that we lost, because I still want to collect those relics if we can. All right, my troops are most way across the map. It is probably time for us to go for the kill. Let's see what we can do here. So my cavalry, of course, are a heck of a lot faster than the rest of my units. Uh, looks like we have found some sort of a yurt. Okay, we can burn that thing down to the ground. No problem. Here are some extra reinforcements. Let's bring them forward. Oh, crud. All right, we found them. So cavalry are great at slaughtering um, the archers if you can get them in the back line. But if your enemy has spearmen, then they are going to be taken out pretty quickly. So you ideally do want to be uh, microing your units to try and uh, play the game of rock, paper, scissors and uh, attack the right types of units for maximum damage and survivability. Use it correctly. And yeah, you should be able to win most of your fights, but it's easier said than done. Sometimes war is just, you know, a giant cluster and it's really easy to lose track of everybody. This outpost is just a basic uh, tower. Our units are all gonna be throwing some fire in order to burn that sucker down. Let's keep training up some more reinforcements like so. And uh, maybe some additional spearmen or something that we do have some unique technologies. I don't think I have the resources to justify it right now. All right, so we're at least causing a little bit of damage and disrupting his ability to gather some materials, but this isn't exactly what we would call a mortal blow. So we need to try to push into his town center, and this may be kind of heavy in losses, but if he doesn't have enough units to defend, this is my opportunity. Okay, see, I've already found some of his military structure, so if we can take out some of these units that are defending and burn down his stables, his archery ranges, and so on, then this should be pretty easy. You know, we're just kind of pressing the advantage that we have right now. We're going to prevent him from training units, and I'm just going to keep streaming more and more units up to the front line. At this point, our economy should be strong enough that we should be able to keep trickling units up here, more reinforcements for everyone that we lose. 
All right, we found his uh, town center and his other landmark over here. Unfortunately, with this many people garrisoned, they are peppering me with arrows. This is like trying to take on a fort without any sort of siege weapons. But again, if we can keep trickling up units and he's got nothing, we can win this. It's just kind of a long battle of attrition, but I've got the resources and he can't, uh, he can't gather anything, so he's gonna run out of steam long before I do. Almost got it. The town center is officially on fire at this point. If they don't repair the building, it will burn down on its own, though because it's shooting at me, I'm still gonna try to hasten its demise if we can. Here come some more reinforcements. Yep, this is all going according to plan. We've just lost almost all of my infantry at this point. It's pretty costly. But once this is down, it's gonna end up being GG. Come on, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. We've almost got it. There we go. We destroyed a landmark. All right, that's one out of two. All we have to destroy is his other landmark and we win the game. But I'm still gonna try to take out some of these military buildings because he's still training up more units than I'm willing to accept at this point. And the more we take down, the easier it goes. Oh, they're trying to repair their town center. Oh, that's an act of desperation if ever I saw one, AI. What do you think you're doing? No, that ain't gonna work for you. Take out this last tower. That'll be the last of his defenses that are currently poking at me. Then we can go ahead and burn this thing down with impunity. And just like that, we get our first victory against the AI in Age of Empires 4. Well, that was pretty fun. Though I didn't get to use some other mechanics of the game. We didn't even use any siege engines. Those are pretty fun. Didn't build any walls either. And yes, by the way, you can fight on top of stone walls using your infantry. That's actually pretty important. We also didn't even go to the Imperial Age. But you know what? It turns out Age of Empires 2 strategies are still very effective here. So the AI had no idea what hit them. Of course, there's lots of replayability with skirmishes, with different game modes, and, you know, just lots of different nations that you can play with. And this is a roster of all the different nations we will have access to at the launch for Age of Empires 4. Each different civilization, of course, does have some of their own different civilization bonuses, unique technologies, unique structures, and so on. So plenty of replayability there, and I would not at all be surprised if we are going to see more added into the game at some point in the future. So that's a quick taste of what Age of Empires 4 has in store for single player mode. Of course, I can't speak to multiplayer mode because at the time I'm recording this, the game has not released yet, but I think this is gonna end up making or breaking the game. If the matchmaking is strong and there's a good player base, this game should do just fine on launch day. If those aren't there, well, that'll be a bit of a problem, but I'm optimistic. As far as my overall impressions, they're very, very strong so far. I think that the art and the animations are excellent, sound quality is great, level design and campaigns are really fun to play, and everything that I liked about the feel and the gameplay of Age of Empires 2 is here, but with a few twists to make it more modern and a little bit different. Overall, guys, this might just be the game that we've been looking for. The true sequel to Age of Empires 2. I can't give it any higher praise than that. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you found this video helpful in some way, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.